بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ایوری بان ویلکم بیک ٹو دا پی ایل تھری ہنڈریڈ ایگزام پریپریشن سیریز ویئر وی آر ہیونگ اے لک ایٹ دا فرسٹ لرننگ پیتھ پریپیئر دا ڈیٹا ان دس ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو کنٹینیو آر ڈسکشن آن دا ٹاپک مرج اینڈ اپینڈ کویریز ان دا پریویس پارٹ آف دس ٹاپک وی ہیڈ اے ڈیٹیل لک ایٹ جوائنس اینڈ آئی سیٹ دیٹ جوائنس ایکچولی مینز مرج ان سائڈ آف پاور کویری ایڈیٹر سو ناؤ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو گو بیک ٹو آر ایگزامپل دا سپر اسٹور ایگزامپل اینڈ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ہیو اے لک how we can use the merge part to actually perform merging between different queries. So now let's go to the example. So here I am back in the Excel sheet and in the previous video we saw that how we created this store dimension and we saw that how we combined the city and postal code to create a new ID which is the store ID. So I am adding store ID here. and now i have the store id as the primary key here the customer id as the primary key here and the item id as the primary key here for these three dimensions so if we talk about the transactions which is going to be our fact table then we have already figured out that these are the columns which either represent the quantitative value or some transaction value so before i actually go and explain the foreign key concept here let's have a look at these two dates so order date and ship date are two columns which are present in the transactions table and they represent a transact uh, represent a transaction for all real world problems we if we have a column in any of the tables that has a date so like we have here two columns order date and ship date then there is another dimension that is added in the data model and that is either a calendar or a dates dimension so here i am saying that this is my dates dimension and this dates dimension can have multiple columns but the primary key for this column is a date so it covers a it it covers all the dates that are specified in your data set and all of those dates are captured in a date column so we know that in a calendar every date is unique so the date can also act like a primary key so we have another column added uh, another sorry uh, dimension added which is the dates dimension and in which we at least have one column and we are going to look in another video that there are more more columns that can be added in this table so coming back to the transaction so we have now all the columns captured which are either the quantitative values or the transactional values and now we need to capture the foreign key so we know that we have three dimensions so the first one is customer id so we need to have customer id here as a foreign key similarly we need to have item id and lastly we need to have the store id so we need to have the store id here as well so these are the three foreign key so let me just give them another color so that we are actually aware that these are the foreign keys and similarly for the dates i am also going to give them another color so these are columns all these columns are now required as part of the transactions table and we can see that here we have the total count for these columns as 16 so now let's go back to the power query editor and let's create this fact table transactions i am back in the power query editor and now i am going to create my fact table which is the transactions table and i am going to follow the same process that i have been following for the previous dimension so i am going to create just click on super store and create a copy by using reference and then the new query i am going to just drag it into the data model area and i am going to rename it as transactions now i am going to just keep the columns the columns that we just saw in the excel sheet and i am going to remove the columns which are not required in this particular table so now i have removed all the columns that were redundant in this transactions table and if you go and see the left bottom area here it says 17 columns but we saw that in the excel sheet we had 16 columns so why there are 17 columns here there are 17 columns here because i have kept city and postal code here 
as the two columns because in order to create a relationship in order to create a relationship between the stores table and the transactions table so remember we do not have the stores id here yet so in order to create that store id we need to have the city and the postal code columns here so that we can use these two columns to create the store id and in fact here we are not going to create the store id we are going to look at another method which is exactly the uh, the 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 main title of this particular video and that is the merging so we are going to see that how we can bring in the store id which is there inside the store table that how we can actually bring in the store id using the merging and we can bring this into the transactions table so remember that in order to create a join you need to have the column so we already have city and region here and we we already have city and re, uh, as sorry city and postal code in this uh, table city and postal code in this table and in the transactions table we also have the city and the postal code so now we are going to use these two columns because the condition for join is uh, is uh, available or it is met that we need to have at least the common column or common columns so we are going to now use the merge functionality inside of power query editor and we are going to bring the stores store id from the stores table into the transactions table as a foreign key so let us now look at the merge functionality and in order, and in order to do that merging we have to be in the home menu here and there is an area which is being shown here which says the combine option so here we see that there are two options merge queries and append queries we have already looked at the append queries option in a different video so if you remember where we created in the maven markets example we created a transactions folder and inside that folder we had 1996 and 1998 data related to the transactions and we connected to the folder and we perform the append operation so appending we have already done through that option and we are going to look at a later stage that how we can use this particular option to append the queries but the overall objective is the same that in appending we are appending row wise so the structure of the tables have to be the same and the two tables are then combined row wise but this is not the case for merge so we have already seen that merge is actually the join functionality so if we are going to perform the join here or the merge here with the transaction table so i'm going to go and i'm going to click on this drop down here so it says you have two options merge queries or merge queries as new so it says that either you can merge and the result resultant uh, columns will be added in the original query or you can create a new query and that can be done through the merge queries and as new so we are not going to create a new query because we just simply want to merge the column inside this query so i'm going to just click on the merge queries option here and it opens up the merge uh, merge window so here transactions table is already selected so now we have to go and select the other table which is what which is the stores table so now the merge merging between two tables can be done because we have both the tables selected so now we have to go and select the columns on which we need to perform the join so first i am going to go in the transactions table and select city then i am going to come here in the stores table and and select city but i know that the that the merging has to be done using two columns so i will now go by pressing control and i am going to select postal code in the transactions table and then similarly i am going to select postal code in the stores table this you have to do by pressing the control key on the keyboard now we have selected the respected columns and if you come towards the bottom area here so if you come here to the bottom area it says that there is a fuzzing match fuzzy match matching options and here it says that the selection matches 9426 of 9426 rows from the first table so as you can see that the source of both the tables the stores table and the transactions table is the original super stores table so there is a perfect match that has taken place between the records 
in transactions and stores so we don't we do not need to worry about any null values here similarly there is another option here if you go and look at this option and this is the join kind option so here it is asking or here it is giving you the option to specify that which join do you want to actually use so in our case here because again i am going to re-emphasize this point that as the source of both these tables is the same super stores table so we actually uh, use the super score store table to create a copy that we that was used in the stores table or the stores query and then we removed all the duplicate values and similarly for the transactions we performed the same operation and we use the super store so here we need not worry about any null values but in terms of efficiency the best performance is going to be given by the inner join so if we go and select the inner join that is going to give you give us the best option and we need, need not worry about any of the other options because we know that all the records are common between the two tables so i can just go and select the inner join it is going to show me the same uh, you know fuzzy matching option or i can just go and uh, you know stay with the left outer join so it totally up it's totally up to me but just remember that inner join is the most efficient option but i am going to just stay with the left outer and i am just going to click on ok here so you are going to see that in the transactions table there is a column that has been created and it inside this column which is called as stores you are going to see that there are certain clickable values which say table so what has happened it has hap what happened what has happened is that a join has been performed but it is still in the form of a table and if i just go and click on this expander option here now here it is telling me that go and please select the columns that you want here so as a result of the join what columns do you want to bring from the stores table so first of i am going to just uncheck this because i do not want to use the name of the original column and then i know that the only column i require here is the store id so i do not require city postal code region and state all all i require is the store id and here i am going to just go and click on okay so now you can clearly see that the store id column is now a part of the transactions table at the very right so i have actually brought the primary key as a foreign key in my transactions table so stores is my dimension table where here store id is a primary key and here in the transactions table by using the join or using the merge functionality i have brought in the store id as a foreign key and now i do not need this city and this postal code columns because now the id has already been uh, brought here as a foreign key so i am going to select these two columns and i am going to remove these two columns and now i have 16 columns in my transactions table and now the working that i started through the excel sheet is now complete and all my columns for the transactions table are now available inside the power query editor so in this video we we had a detailed look at the merge or the join functionality so in the previous video we studied that what are the different types of joins and in this video we saw a practical example where we use joins to basically combine two tables and then we just selected one column that we needed in the transactions table so this is how you can perform joins or in the in terms of the power query language the merge inside of power query editor we are going to have a look at append in some other video we already uh, had a look at appending the queries so the process is exactly the same that we connected the two tables or we combined the two tables at the time of making a connection same we can do by using the append option but we are going to explore this option in another video so that's all for this video and i will see you in an other one